So where can teens go to get that help? The best place is a trusted adult. It does not have to be mom and dad. That can be anyone. For me, how my situation played out, like I said, when I was going through it, I didn't realize that any of that behavior was really wrong. This right. was my interaction romantically with someone. And so I essentially this young man had asked me to be his girlfriend and I was very flattered, but I said, no, thank you. And that's when a lot of this behavior started. So mm-hmm. my instinct is like, OK, this is how people handle rejection. And my friends actually mentioned it to my parents. So that's first of all, for teens who might be listening. That's always an option, too. If you notice your friend is going through something, yes. uh, it's not always easy to be the one to report that something's happening with your friends to an adult, but sometimes that can be really life-saving. Yes, necessary. Um, yeah, talking to parents, talking to guidance counselors at school, if you have sports coaches, mentors, anyone, finding an adult is really helpful. There are also a lot of resources online. Love is Respect is a website that is specifically centered around dating violence. And it's this great website. You're going to get a ton of information. You're going to learn how to safety plan. You're going to learn how to identify healthy versus unhealthy versus abusive. And they have a lot of great resources that they can kind of send things out to you. And the last one that I'll mention, actually, I serve as an ambassador for Bling Sing, which is the industry leader for like cute personal safety devices. And so that means like rhinestone or sparkly safety alarms or pepper spray, things like that. Because taking taking control of your personal safety doesn't have to be a scary thing. It can be a cute keychain that you put on your backpack and you have it there. And the worst case scenario is that you never have to use it. And that's not a bad situation. Uh, the best case scenario is it gives you a little peace of mind and a little bit of safety when you're walking around. Right. So what is a safety plan? Great question. So a safety plan can be a couple different things based on context. We talk about safety plans when we talk about depression, too. But for a abusive situation, a safety plan is going to be really sitting down and thinking through your options ahead of time. So that might look like if I am currently in an abusive situation, let's say my partner is physically hurting me, where are the people I can call? Where are the places I can go? If I'm trying to exit the relationship, where are places I can get money? What are the days that my partner is not home that I can move out of the house? And there are prompts for this. There are templates online that you can just sit down and it really forces you to kind of stop yeah. what your options are. Think through who is in your life that can help support you and think through what that plan is going to look like if you need to safely exit the relationship. Well, and I think just thinking about exiting a relationship when you're in a situation like that can be very overwhelming, right? You don't know what you don't know. You don't know where you can go that is going to be safe. You want to be safe. Are they going to come after me? Are they going to find me? Like, what's going to happen? So you tend to be, I would think, on high alert with everything. But the last thing you're really like focused on is creating that plan, but also creating it in a successful way. So I love that there's things out there for them, to, like a template for them to go through step by step to make sure that they've worked everything out figured out all the answers to the questions that are going on in their mind. What if this happens or where can I go or how can I, all those kind of things for them to get answers. So they also feel more safe and secure leaving that situation. 